future episodes, I plan to look more into turtle spaces. But in the meantime, if you go to turtlespaces.org, there is a demo video that will give you an idea of a lot of things that you can do with turtle spaces. If you go to the September 1st blog entry under news, you will see a tutorial that takes you step by step through drawing the tree and the forest demo. So I recommend you take advantage of these tutorials by Anti Myrtle. Welcome to Playing with Science, recently cracked by 4AM from 1988 Sunburst. So this is a temperature measurement uh, software which um, allows students to um, measure temperatures and uh, over time and create graphs of them. Now, in, you could actually run this in an emulator where it will use the joystick to represent the thermistors. So by experimentation, I found out that um, if you use two thermistors, paddle one is the first and paddle zero is the second. So it, it allows up to three. Um, now you could actually experiment on a real apple by using potentiometers. And I found that um, it, you need potentiometers greater than 150K. So like a one mega ohm is a good value to use if you're doing your own um, experiments with this software. So it's a good idea to keep it as Celsius. So you could see zero to 100, that's freezing to boiling. And then your type of display, you have choices of a line, a digital display, or thermometer displays, or bar charts. So you could experiment with those. I'm going to keep it as a line. The time, I'm just going to put it down to like three minutes right now, okay, for the demo. And we'll do two thermistors because we're in an emulator. And uh, let's run an experiment. Okay. I don't know exactly what hardware came with this. I haven't seen a box or anything about this software. Okay, so here you have a Macintosh-like menu. Your arrows move, and that, that was the thing in the 1980s. Emulate the Macintosh. So you could catalog a disk. Um, so now, see, it won't uh, show you, it'll only show you data files that you previously saved. But uh, so you would initialize a disk, put it in drive two if you have two drives. Those were expensive back then. And your graph options, you can start over and if you change the values for your min and max. So what we're gonna do is start the experiment, press return to stop. Now you notice my mouse pointer is here in the middle. So it is um, interpreting the variable resistance through the game port as the temperatures. So the y-axis is white. So as I move up, that means lower resistance. So I can draw it now. See, if it goes down to zero, it thinks that the thermistor is not connected. So apparently this thermistor, um, it had some uh, calibration with the software where it could um, interpret zero resistance as now it's not connected but let's go down so now i'm moving it down on the y-axis and that is cooling and that's how it interprets it so higher resistances will lead to cooling so now when i go down here to the bottom you see it's around 45 yeah 45 is uh, the value that it thinks for 255, that's how it translates that. So if I double the resistance, um, it's actually a different type of curve. And you'll see that in some of the experiments that I do with ice water and boiling water. Okay, so now the x-axis controls the purple one. So as I move left, it will um, increase the temperature and then Whoa, <laughs> look at that, 235 degrees Celsius, oh no. And if I 
Okay, so now it thinks it's not connected, so you can't go all the way left. Let's start, uh, yeah. Okay, let's continue. All right, so the graph is showing 100, but if you go up, it's be, uh, beyond the graph, so keep it in the graph range. And then we'll bring it down. So this is what they're gonna use at the airport, an Apple II computer connected to thermistors and if your your body temperature is 100 degrees celsius i don't know you can't fly all right let's go down so what should it be celsius should be 35 or so or 30. see us americans we're not used to this we gotta learn we know the formulas five nine something with five ninths and nine fifths but uh, here's 255, 255. Okay, how's our timer doing? Two, okay, another few seconds, so let's just randomly jiggle the data. So here's how you generate random numbers. You move joysticks in random ways, and then you get good randomness, because uh, any user input can be used as a uh, random seating. Okay, time is up. I press any key, I pressed return. All right. Okay, so now let's graph this and go to analyze. My data has not been saved, oh no. Well, I could save it on a floppy if I wanna keep doing more analysis on it, but if you just press return, it'll keep that data in memory and graph it. Okay, please wait. Now, Micromate is warping your disk drive, so that's nice. Okay, so here we see our data over three minutes, and what is nice is we can zoom in and see different scales. So let's do a zoom. Now to zoom, you set your corner. So your starting temperature is this bottom. So let's set it here and see. So this is just my joystick. I'm playing around, but uh, let's set it here and let's set the corner. Okay, so you could set your ending time and it's going to draw a rectangle of it around the data. And now setting the size. Okay, so what you have to do is set your corner first and then set size by moving up. Okay, and um, say I want to go out to here and just look at this segment of data. Okay, now you could see your graph. Okay, and let's see, you could select your thermometer if you want to get rid of the blue. Now you just see the white, or you could see both, or just the blue, which is really purple. Okay, by time, every 15 seconds, and then you get uh, different line graphs, interpolations, okay, and let's see what else you can do by point, okay, and what do I do here, oh, okay, so now you could walk along your graph and see the actual values. Yeah, it jumped from one to the other, how about that, it's looking at your maximums. Hello. Today we're going to explore science with an Apple IIe computer. So we're going to look at a temperature measuring program. And I have a cup of ice water with the thermometer in it. But uh, I want to show you that all you need to hook up to the Apple IIe is a RCA jack connected to paddle zero. And you could run a simple test by booting any disk and typing a basic program. Okay, so all it's doing is printing the value of paddle zero, which is 255. Okay, so I'll leave it here so you can watch that. Okay, now I'm gonna connect the thermistor to the Apple. And you see that the value has changed to 116. And now what I'm going to do is hold it in my hand and you see that it is going down as the thermistor gets 
hotter. Okay, if I let go, then it should gradually, eventually turn and start going up again. So once it feels that it's not being heated anymore. Okay, so it went back to 100. You'll see some jitter when it goes between 100 and 101, and then it stays at 101. So this is a 45 minute experiment that I ran and you can change the spacing to see the data at every five minutes in this example and the values of the temperature at each point. Then you undo your pick points, you get back to your original data and now you can now look at it by point by picking points of interest anywhere on the graph. Okay, and then you'll be able to see the data for those points. So this shows just the five points that you selected, and then you can see the data behind those points. So notice that we're going from 15 minutes to 16 minutes. So it's a deceptive graph. Temperature lab. This is by Hayden Software, and it was a, collabor a collaboration with Dickinson College. So you're watching the Apple version where the temperature becomes orange when it rises and now it's going to start cooling and it becomes blue when it cools. Okay, let's press the any key. In this software, a screen image of a thermometer or a graph can be dumped onto a disk for a later printout or display by pressing the D key. The sounds can be turned on or off in any menu screen with the S key. Okay, press the any key. All right. And this is all I can do in the emulator because it's looking for a uh, module. So I'm gonna demonstrate this on a Commodore 64. The most important artifact of this software package is this user manual. They really did an amazing job. Look how thick it is. Now, look at the table of contents. Um, introduction to the Discovery Series, temperature and its measurement, temperature projects, graphing, how temperature changes over time, how quickly can the sensor change temperature, keeping your soda cold, uh, salt and ice, and let's see, kitchen chemistry, baking soda and vinegar. Oh, that's fun. Uh, measuring daily changes in air temperature and the appendices and they came up with this cartoon dragon which is used throughout the book with little whimsical illustrations so you can see the dragon doing science experiments so this really helps um, the students learn the scientific method and if they follow it properly they will learn how to keep log books and how uh, to design experiments. I mean, look how much detail they give you. Yeah, they go over the software. So um, I don't know if this is scanned or archived anywhere, but um, these manuals are very valuable artifacts to be preserved. This is a Commodore 128 which has a Pi 1541, which is a Raspberry Pi running a program that simulates a cycle accurate 1541 floppy disk drive, and um, a video connector homemade to S-Video, and a joystick and the um, Hayden um, Discovery Series interface. So for temperature measurement, the um, right has a 150K ohm resistor and the left has the thermistor that is provided in the pack. And it goes into control port two. Um, control port one requires a joystick, which is used for navigation in the program.
Temperature Lab Software, 1985 Dickinson College, published by Hayden Software. This is the Commodore 64 version, so you can see the color for heat and the color for cold. So it's rising up. And I do have a joystick plugged into port one. I just want it to get to the top. And then you'll see it start to cool from the top down. Okay, and now it goes blue and back down. And here's the joystick and the red button. Okay, plug in the sensors. Commodore interface goes into control port two. So let's do that. And everything is all set up. Okay, so um, the blue sensor is the thermistor and the orange um, is the control. Okay, let's press the red button. Okay, make the volume a little lighter. So, um, use the joystick. Set up experiments. So I want Celsius or Fahrenheit. The time, I want it to run for five minutes. And I could begin experiment or I can press Okay, let's do this again. Press red button to go back. So you can see a demo of uh, the time in seconds. Press F3 to stop for some reason. Okay, um, the bulb is a bulb view. Press F3 to record. So uh, this thermistor is reading 70 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Okay, we could calibrate um, for the sensor, okay, you can calibrate it if you have problems. For the resistor, they want you to unplug the blue and the orange, and as you unplug it, the checkboxes come up. So the blue sensor is this uh, thermistor, and um, so this is the control, which is a 150K resistor in an RCA jack. I'm going to plug that into the orange right, and it found it, and I'm going to plug in the, this one. Okay. Okay, so we're good. So let's go and start our experiment. Okay, set up experiment. Choose time, five minutes, and we're going to test um, ice water. So we begin experiment, and... Let's see, where are we reading? Okay, push button to begin. So this is room temperature. It should be showing something. I'm just gonna put it in the ice water and we'll see how it cools. Yes, it cools rapidly. <laughs> Look at that, down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I didn't change, I wanted Celsius, but Fahrenheit is fine. Let's see if it goes down to 32 and how fast it goes down. So this is a cooling curve, and it is reading the thermistor as a variable resistor. And I guess the orange is the control. So let's let this run and see if it goes any further down. Below 40 would be nice. Okay, what I'm going to do is take the thermistor out and just uh, let it get back to room temperature. So let's see if it, ri if it rises slowly, getting back to room temperature. Now how about if I touch it between my thumb and index finger, it's going to take my temperature, 98.6. Look at that, it's going up. Okay, so I'm actually, what, under 80? No, I'm at 80. It's going up. And now I'm going to plunge it back into the freezing water. And it just rapidly shoots down. Okay. And it's back at its 
Let's see how low it goes. We'll stop it at three minutes. All right, let's stop it now. Let's see, to save the data. Yeah, let's try that. F3 to save. Okay. It's saving onto the Pi 1541, and let's see a table. Okay, 60th of a second increments. So it went from 70 to 72, 54, 48, 45, 43. And it stayed at 43, it went down to 41, went up to 45, 6, 8, 61. And then I started holding it. It went up to 81. And then back down to 41. Nice. Okay, so let's go to Celsius. And we're going to do an experiment with boiling water this time. In this experiment, we're going to move the thermistor from ice water to boiling water. And we're going to run it for three minutes. So first I'm going to put it at room temperature. So let's begin. Okay, push the button. And now we're graphing. We are about a little over five degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to take it out of the ice water and leave it at room temperature until it gets to one minute. And then we're going to plunge it into the boiling water. Okay, we got to 10 degrees Celsius. Here we go. Boom. Uh-oh, we're off scale already. <laughs> Look at that. Oh boy, 40 degrees, 45 degrees Celsius. It's, so is that the top of its scale? Hmm, interesting. Because it would be 100 if it was fully boiled. Yeah, I think we're off scale here. Okay, let's take it out and leave it at room temperature until we get to two minutes. Let's see if it gets over the shock of that. How fast can it cool down from boiling? Maybe we'll go to two and a half minutes before we plunge it back into the freezing. That's, and that's coming back to room temperature, trying to figure out what room temperature is. So at two and a half minutes, it had to creep all the way back down from 100. Now to room temperature, it's trying to figure that out. But we're going to plunge you right back into ice water now. And you go right back down to 10. Okay, now we're collecting data and you could fit a curve to this data statistically if you were doing controlled experiments and it's going to stop at three minutes nice sound effect and now i'm overwriting oh look at that at least tells me my file exists so i don't overwrite it take it out of the ice water and put it into the boiling water Whoa, look at that curve. Nice. F3 to record that, and what does it do? It takes samples. Okay. Let's see, demo. Yeah. Let's go back to ice water right from freezing. Whoa, nice. 10 seconds. 15 seconds. 20 seconds. Okay. Now what's it doing? Ah, it fit a curve. How nice. Oh, is that the actual data? That might be the actual data. Okay, button for menu. Let's go back to bulb. Okay, and we're gonna record some measurements. Let's see if I F3. Okay, 43.6. And now we put it in boiling. F3. F3, F3, okay, button for menu, that's all it does. Let's do that demo again. Boiling, we're gonna go right into freezing.
Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing going from freezing to boiling. Heating curve, okay? So at five seconds, I'm gonna move it to boiling now. And we're off the chart already. Now I'd like to see what values it actually registered here. Okay, if we wait, it's gonna show different graphs. Okay, so it really can't read above 45 Celsius. Okay, in this experiment, I wanna see how the, what is the curve for going from ice water back to room temperature. So let's begin the experiment. And it looks like, yeah, we're at our five minutes. We're at our five degrees Celsius right now. Now I'm taking it out. I'm going to let it go back to room temperature, just hanging in the air. So this is the result of the experiment. It looks like a logarithmic curve. And now we're going to look at some of the other options to see the graph or the table. So that just shows you the graph again. Okay, now we're trying to print it, but we don't have a printer. So printer not there. Now we're looking at the data and we're gonna page through it. So you can see at each five second interval what the uh, value of the degree Celsius was read from the thermistor. And now we try to save the data to disk we give it a new file name. Looks like you could have nine different save files. Temp zero to temp nine. Let's go back and look at the bulb. F3, 18 degrees Celsius is room temperature. Demo. Let's see if it stays at 18. Should mix mockingbird music in. Jitter. Yes, we have jitter. That's good. We're done.